quiet, guys. We're looking for wild gamers. Oh, look. There they are. We found some. Okay, guys, guys. Watch this. <gasps> Loot boxes! Oh, boy. That got their attention. Oh, shit. I better start running. Oh, oh shit. Oh, shit. Hey! Hi! How you doing? This is the Gamertron, and welcome back to the Gamertron Show. So, <laughs> EA's Star Wars Battlefront 2. Megan was right. Everything's gone to hell. And so, the video game community moral outrage machine is at it again. EA really screwed the pooch this time. They went one microtransaction too far. The outrage, the controversy, the drama over EA's Star Wars Battlefront 2 and its pay-to-win loot box microtransactions is legendary. Now this would typically be the part of the video where I would do what every other gaming YouTuber is doing at the moment and relay to you, repeat to you the exact same information you have heard over and over and over again. But I'm not going to because you already know everything there is to know about Star Wars Battlefront 2. No one's shutting up about it anytime soon. Granted, this is a hot topic. This is the talk of the gaming community town. It's popular and very profitable. Now that's not me throwing shade on every single gaming YouTuber that is talking about this, but maybe if you make 10 videos in a row, which are basically the same video repeating themselves over and over again, then maybe, just maybe, you're milking this topic just a tad bit. But hey, that's not what this video is about. I'm not actually here to talk to you about the Star Wars Battlefront 2 pay-to-win microtransactions. There's nothing to debate or defend over when it comes to them. They are garbage. There's no way to dance around it. And they fundamentally, negatively impact the gameplay experience. But you've heard all that before. What I want to talk about, something I believed or not considered to be a tad bit more important, is the gaming community moral outrage machine at it again. At full force. Now, I've seen sweaty nerds on the internet go on a rampage before, but nothing like this. This is whole new levels of toxic waste. Now, what is the mature and rational adult response to finding out that a video game contains business practices that you don't approve of, that you don't like. You simply don't buy the game. And boom, just like that, problem solved. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, go on your life a breezy. But how's the gaming community reacting to this? Now, I wouldn't mind this reaction if it was a bunch of children and teenagers, because they're immature, they haven't grown up yet, they haven't gotten a full education. But what's disturbing about this situation is that these false narratives, this rhetoric, is being spread by grown-ass men in their 20s, 30s, and even above. There are even gaming YouTubers enabling and supporting this garbage. The rhetoric, the false narratives, the garbage I'm talking about is this nonsense going around, especially in YouTube comment sections, is about how EA is unethical, they're malicious, they're predatory, they're evil. And all this garbage does is just confirm my biases and confirm what I've been saying for years now that the gaming community has a problem with immaturity and outrage. Okay, so Star Wars Battlefront 2 has a garbage progression system and garbage microtransactions. So you want people to be fired? You want people thrown in jail? You want people to have some sort of physical punishment because of this? And you honestly believe that the individuals who implement these business practices are somehow bad people by nature? This is so out of touch with reality in such a closed-minded perspective because when you take a wired perspective outside of video games, this isn't a big deal whatsoever. This is just video games, folks. This isn't a life or death situation here. On top of that, we see this collectivist bullshit ideology rear its ugly head again. This us versus them, good versus evil, black and white mentality. Everyone who works at EA is a monster. They are all horrible people. They all think and want the same things. No, you dimwit. EA is not a collective. They are not a hive mind. It is a corporation. It is a business built up, made up of individuals. Individuals with their own 
free will and opinions and personal lives. Get out of this militant mindset. EA are not an enemy. They are just a video game publishing company. And you, you dear viewer, you dear gamer, have this wonderful thing called free will. Free will. It enables you to make your own choices. You don't want to buy an EA product. You don't want to support their business practices. Well, just don't give them your money. It's that simple. EA is not coming into your house. They're not pointing a gun to your head and they're not taking the money out of your wallet. You are handing it over to them of your own free will. And it is because of this wonderful, beautiful thing we call free will and individuality that AAA video game publishers keep upping the ante and keep implementing these microtransaction business practices because individuals of their own free will are spending their money on them. And I know this is hard to do, but look at this from another perspective. Look at this from the perspective of the individuals working at Electronic Arts. Keep in mind, these video game publishers, the heads, the people running the video game industry, as ironic as it is, the people who run these video game publishers aren't gamers. They are, for the most part, older men who grew up in a generation without video games, who didn't play video games. Yet, through their life experiences and rising through the ranks of business in different corporations, they have come to be the heads of video game publishers. And while they don't play video games themselves, they see that video games are a very profitable industry. The heads of these video game publishers aren't gamers. They aren't the consumers of video games. So they are not experiencing firsthand how these business practices negatively affect the gameplay experience. All they're seeing is the money that is being generated from these business practices. They're not playing their own games. I assure you, they're not playing their own games because if they did, I'd like to give the benefit of the doubt that they would come to the same realization we all do that these business practices negatively affect the gameplay experiences. There's all this fear-mongering that video games are going to get worse. There's going to be a gaming crash. No, you dimwits. First off, video games are making more money than ever before, and there are more people buying video games than ever before. The video game industry isn't going to bloody crash. It's making too much money. There's too many people playing video games. Don't be ridiculous. On top of that, video gaming isn't going to get worse. It's only going to get better in the future. Why? Because the heads at these video game publishers, eventually, they're going to retire or more morbidly, but it's the truth, pass away, and the next generation of CEOs who will run these companies will be, most likely, individuals who actually play video games, who grew up with video games. They know what it's like to be a gaming consumer. They will know what business practices the consumers are comfortable with and which ones they are not. Right now, the video game industry is run by people who don't play video games. Basic research, some simple Google searches would show you this. From the perspective of the current individuals running these video game publishing companies, all they're seeing is the profit. That's all they're seeing. They don't see video games as an art form because they don't play them. And I can't blame someone with that perspective. When you're here to run a business and maximize profits, you're gonna follow the money trail. And where is the money trail right now? Microtransactions, DLC season passes, all this stuff. It is profitable. It is undeniably profitable. We have evidence. We have numbers showing that these business practices are successful, that they make millions of dollars. I can't blame publishers who see their products as only products, not chasing the trends to maximize the profit on the products. Now, I don't like the vast majority of these business practices, but the money they make speak for themselves. But what about the morals? What about the ethics? The gamers cry out. Well, no one's being physically harmed. No one's being lied to or stolen from. You are not being forced against your will to buy these video games or support these business practices, so I think these companies are morally and ethically in the clear here. Outside of Konami, because there's actual evidence of Konami abusing their employees, so yeah, that's pretty immoral and unethical. Fuck Konami. However, when it comes to being anti-consumer, which there is no doubt about it, these video game publishers can certainly be anti-consumer, the solution is to simply not consume them and and support the pro-consumer video games and developers and publishers and business practices out there. Throwing a temper tantrum on the internet is not productive or adult behavior, which leads into a topic tied up with this and one I've talked about in an earlier video, and that's the gamer shaming. It's not enough that the gaming community be overtly dramatic over these video game corporations, accusing them of being supervillains. We also got to attack and shame and insult others for exercising their free will and spending their money how they want to, buying and playing the games they want to. Now, I understand the perspective and mindset of some of the people doing the gamer shaming. 
You want your video games in the future to be better. You don't want them to have these business practices. And by buying these games and supporting these business practices, this perpetuates these types of games and these types of practices. I get it. But shaming other people, insulting other people, providing a negative response to another doesn't help. If anything, it perpetuates the problem and drives people to keep buying those games and keep supporting these business practices. Allow me to share a personal example. I wasn't originally going to buy the original Watch Dogs back in 2014. I had very little interest in Watch Dogs, but then the gaming community started shitting all over it, started shitting all over Ubisoft, and started shitting all over the gamers that actually liked the game. It drove me to buy and play and try out Watch Dogs to see what's the big deal. I've seen gameplay of this game. Why are people acting the way they are about this game. Why the hate? Ironically, I kind of have to thank the video game community, because if it wasn't for their shitty behavior over Watch Dogs, I wouldn't have bought and played Watch Dogs, and it was my one of my favorite games of 2014. I actually really enjoy Watch Dogs. I mean, people wonder why video games like Call of Duty and Destiny are so successful, yet they are littered with shitty business practices, and they have zealot-like, hardcore fan bases. Well, maybe, just maybe, if you didn't try to shame and insult, and quite frankly, just act like dicks towards people who actually like these games, who enjoy these games, you wouldn't cement their biases, make them feel persecuted for dare playing a video game you don't like, and have them become more attached to that game. I understand you want to push people away from the negative influences these games cause, but instead of pushing them away, you're pushing them towards it. Negative action creates negative reaction. You act like an angry zealot to others, you create angry zealots. But what I'm getting at here, with all of this, is just stop being angry. It's just video games. Video games are a pastime, a media, a form of entertainment, and with your free will and your individuality, you get to pick and choose which ones to entertain yourself with. I wholeheartedly disagree with a lot of YouTubers saying, stay angry, stay mad at EA. That solves nothing. That does nothing. It just makes you look like an immature, irrational child. What I do agree with, with what other YouTubers are repeating, is speak with your wallet. It's an industry. It's a business, kiddo. EA does not read your angry, ranting, venting comments in the YouTube comment section. They do not read your YouTube comments. Understand this. They do not read your YouTube comments. The individuals running EA, the individuals running these video game publishing companies are not the same age as you, do not have the same personal tastes and life experiences of you. They are not watching your favorite YouTuber and scrolling down in the comment section to read your angry, ranty, virtue signaling like whoring comments. Comment. As a consumer, you send a much more powerful, much more meaningful message by not supporting the product, by not buying the product, by not spending your money on the product or the business practices. It's so simple. It's so easy. And yet so many are blowing this up to be bigger than it is. Getting so angry, so mad over something that's honestly really petty. It's just video games, folks. It's just video games. It's not the end of the world. Nobody's dying. And these video game publishers are not stealing your money. They're not predators. They're not being predatory. I see this word. I see this term getting thrown around so often. EA and other video game publishers are not taking away your free will. You are still a free thinking individual with your own personal choices. Can we please? Please, I've brought this up before in recent past videos, can we get rid of this collectivist, hive mind mentality, good versus evil, us versus them, black and white bullshit. Not every issue is a battle or a war to be won. It's just video games, folks. Moral outrage need not apply. And there we go. That's my take on the Star Wars Battlefront 2 controversy. Now let's get back to the fun stuff, you know, talking about all the awesome video games that have come out this year in 2017. There's a lot to go through. But this has been a video and you guys know the routine. Please leave a comment in the comment section down below. Leave your thoughts, feelings, and opinions. If you like this video in any way, shape, or form, then please be sure to hit the like button. Please share this video on social media, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you want to help out and support me directly, well, there's always Patreon. Anyways, guys, this has been a video and I'll see you all later.